So just got this in the mail today. This is uh, Yinman Blue from Gamblin Paints. So can't wait to open it. Uh, here's the sweet box that it came in. Just gonna open it up, take a look, see what's inside. Oh, sweet. So you can do it. Uh, obviously cool packaging. Looks like a little uh, note here. And this is a certificate of authenticity, which is super cool. Uh, looks like uh, Robert Gamblin signed it. It's uh, number 70 of 164. Looks like a super limited edition. Can't wait to uh, try it out. So here we are. Nice blue paper. And there we are. In Min Blue. So today I'm going to test the new Yin Min Blue. I just got this tube from Gamblin Oil Paint. Uh, super excited about it. I love blue. There's not a ton of blues out there. Most common are cobalt blue, phthalo blue, ultramarine. But when a new blue comes on the market, I'm always interested to try it. So I wanted to show everyone the power of uh, Yin Min Blue. So it was created uh, by Oregon State University by Mas Subramanian in uh, 2009 and they were, uh, Gamblin was able to get some of the pigment and put it in a tube so it has a light fastness of one it's excellent uh, ASTM rating uh, and it's actually opaque so a lot of blues are transparent so definitely interested to take this for a test and uh, see what happens so here we go So right away it looks almost like a uh, cobalt blue. So very similar. Uh, this is what's referred to as the mass tone when it comes out of a tube, when it's squeezed out um, as a glob. Uh, so interesting, definitely opaque. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is uh, take, and the test drive I'm gonna take and do is to uh, add white and black to it, which is uh, sometimes referred to as tinting, toning, and shading. Uh, shading would be that if you were to take neutral gray uh, and then add that to the mixture. I'll try to do that and do a quick little test down here just to show everyone just the power of this uh, new pigment. So that's titanium white PW4 and here is ivory black. I, be, I believe it's P black 9 which is also referred sometimes as bone black. And uh, titanium white is actually PW6, uh, not 4. Uh, I believe zinc white is PW4. Grab some shop towels here. And then also um, some fresh chirps. So again, out of, out of the tube, you can see it looks like it's a nice, almost similar to uh, cobalt blue. So let's take this and uh, kind of just do a little swatch here at the bottom just to show what it looks like. Uh, painted onto a surface right out of the tube. Definitely is uh, almost like cobalt blue. Absolute beautiful color though. Looks like a true primary blue. Um, I always think of cobalt blue as a primary, even though uh, sometimes phthalo blue is considered a, a primary as well. Obviously it depends on what wheel and what terms you're using as well, but here we have just the uh, Yin Min Blue right out of the tube. The first mixture I'm going to do is take and add white to it. I always recommend mixing with a palette knife, get a good one uh, that's one piece welded. Uh, if not, they could snap off while you're mixing. So gonna grab some titanium white, pull it off to the side here. Also have a nice flat brush. This is a Trikel uh, number two Legion 9100 FL for flat and uh, just nice flat brushes are good when you're just doing like little swatches like this. So let's take a little, little bit of this, pull it off to the side, mix it with this, almost like a 50-50 mixture. Definitely feel it. it feels nice and uh, nice and thick. So um, I believe it's a. Let me check before I say it. But I believe it's a inorganic material. So a lot of the new colors are uh, organic, meaning organic chemistry. They're kind of 
uh, created, well, they're created in the labs. So we have just just a blue, uh, beautiful blue. Um, let's take that. And then what I can do is just uh, put that right next to it. Actually, feels like it tips a little bit towards violet, so I like that. I actually have a color on my palette that this reminds me of, uh, which is right up here. I think that has a tiny bit more violet in it, but this may be uh, very close. There, clean the brush off when you're done. Sometimes what I'll do is just keep going with it too. You could actually do a whole value string if you wanted to. And what you could do by just doing that is to grab a little bit more titanium white, add it to the mixture. And then, um, you know, tinting could just mean as many values this way as I want to by just adding white. They're just common terminology too. You could really uh, any any color to this to see and uh, make notes of which, you know, when I, I like to take my colors for a test drive. I almost like like to think of, you know, what what practical use am I going to use? So if you do complementary mute mixing, meaning that if you were to, you know, look for this color's complement, and then say, uh, you know, maybe I'll try to mix across the wheel. On a traditional wheel, orange would be across from it. So maybe I want to take and uh, that mixture is something that I use a lot. You may find value in kind of doing a little test to see what would happen with that. So, clean the brush off the best I can. This is just Gamsol Mineral Spirits. So I could see this as like a nice, nice sky color. It does seem very similar to uh, ultramarine blue, with a violet kind of uh, bias, where it just tips towards violet when uh, titanium white is added. Let me just do one more mix here. Sometimes what I like to do is just take that mix and almost get it as close to white as you can, uh, just so it almost like taints the mixture. So there'd be almost like no value if I if I uh, did a color string here, meaning going from you know white all the way to black, uh, because white would be white, and uh, so I like to just add just a touch of the um, the pigment to just see what that color note would be, a very very near white value. So what I like to do is, uh, you know, do pigment notes like this, and uh, just keep these for reference because you can always go back and, you know, write down the qualities or the properties uh, of each pigment, and then refer back to this. And uh, you know, if I'm looking for a color, you know, if I'm limiting my palette or if I'm you know, working with a lot of colors, I can definitely. Uh, you know, add this to my palette for, for a painting or not, so. What I like to do is just clean that off. Put this to the side. But you know, if you were to take this for a test drive too, you don't have to do this. You could actually just use it in a painting and then just <clears throat> see the mixing properties <clears throat> just by uh, by using it and it looks very similar to like cobalt blue uh, so let's pull some ivory black over there ivory black is actually uh, it's got a bias towards I believe uh, towards blue <clears throat> so I know right away that it's probably going to go and feel nice and cool when I mix it 
you know, if you mix like this, I seem to have gone rather dark rather quickly. Um, what I can then do is just put that note down. And the paint has great consistency, so. So I can just paint this note uh, right in here. And again, it, it almost appears as black, uh, but it's not. So that may be my darkest note. And, and if you wanted to, you could actually get in here and do a full string of uh, nine values. So I like this is more of like an abbreviation to show quickly kind of what you can do. You know, I think <clears throat> if I think about this in terms of like a value scale, I think this jump right here would be a little bit too too quick. So I think that if uh, I were to go back, I could probably add a value in the middle there. Let's see what happens when I, in between these, So a quick little value scale like this would just make it so that, you know, abbreviated value scale. Uh, you know, I could refer back to this and just say, you know, if I'm painting an object and then I come and take a look at this, uh, I could probably make a note and say, maybe I want this color for, uh, for the painting that I'm doing. But uh, you could also just add it to your palette and then it would just have uh, the properties of uh, you know, or the range of mixing colors that you would with uh, with the Yemen Blue. So what I like to do is to grab a marker and then make notes of it. So there is no CIN number for this because it's brand new. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just make note that this is uh, Yin Min. Uh, blue, uh, this is the home color, so what I'll do is I'll put an H, and that just means, you know, squeezed out of the tube, this is ivory black, this is titanium white, and you know, if that's the home, that's with these mixtures. Ivory black, titanium white. And then sometimes what I'll do, you know, it depends on what I'm doing with these notes, is just put the manufacturer in here. So this is from Gamblin. Uh, the ASCM rating or light fastness rating. I'm gonna just put LF as one, which is fantastic. And the other property of this is that it's opaque. So those for me are enough notes just to know kind of, you know, when to use it. So uh, awesome pigment, definitely handles really well. Um, the beauty of it is that, uh, you know, it it's an opaque color. Some cobalts, I believe, are actually uh, semi-transparent. So this one is a true opaque, I don't know really if there are any other blues uh, in the true blue family. Like this looks like a very high chroma blue um, out of the tube. So that's my cobalt blue right over here. 
and you can see it actually is just more chromatic than that cobalt blue. Also that cobalt blue is dried, so Let's see if I can find my cobalt blue to here we are. So here it is next to cobalt blue. Very close. Yeah, it's extremely close. Yeah, so Yinmen Blue, um, I believe they only made something like 150 or 160 of these. So I was uh, lucky enough to get my hands on one of them. And I uh, highly recommend the color, uh, obviously for novelty sake, but also just because I can't wait to do a painting with it. And when I do, I will definitely um, let everyone know. So thanks for tuning in.